<laughs> One of the things that we use is kind of a, a rules chart, and some charts are more involved, others are less, but you know, children who come to your class are learning certain rules from instruction from public school or school they go to. And we, we, working with public school children, get them after school, but we want to try to continue that pattern of, of structure and rules. So we have a rules chart, and um, I'll go over this maybe the first time so that they know these are the boundaries. These are what the expectations we have during our time. Um, and, and, uh, and sometimes I feel that, you know, just putting it up, you know, up in front of them is, is, is enough. Other times I might have to go over during the Bible time is, you know, we want, you know, eyes on the teacher. We want quiet ears. And if you have a question, raise your hand. And sometimes I'll go out and I'll say and emphasize that. But if I go like this, that means wait and I'll answer the question afterwards, because otherwise trying to answer all these, you know, questions and rabbit trails, your Bible lesson, you know, doubles in its size. So, you know, just having something in front of them um, and knowing that this is what rules we have. Bathroom is important. Use the bathroom before you come to children's church or when you come to class because uh, they, they'll just they'll just start following one another during your Bible lesson. You know, I gotta go to the bathroom. And so just establishing that, use that before you come. Is, is what they know is what you expect of that time together. And again, it's not, it's not just the rule, you know, rules for the sake of the rule. It's saying, you know, Lord, this time that I have with this child is that important that I want them all to be able to hear the things that you have for them and, um, and that they wouldn't be, because Satan's smart enough, he's wise enough to be able to say, you know what, if I can pull that child out uh, away from something you teach them, I've won, I've won in that area. So, you know, just think about that. You have a couple handouts there. Um, Jeanette's going to go over the keys uh, for your preparation. And um, I, I have her do that because she does a great job in preparation. She teaches not only clubs for children, but she also teaches um, for teacher training classes. And, um, and, and so, you know, being prepared in what you do is, is, you know, is so important. And so she's gonna come and share that with us and then we'll get into uh, some nuts and bolts that go into your lesson as well. All right. And one song um, that you can use before your, your actual lesson is, is this one um, about God answering prayers. and. You know, many times God does say no when we, you know, pray about something, but he's not doing it out of, you know, to make our lives miserable. It's because he loves us and he knows what is best for us. And we need to trust his plan when he does say, say no. So um, if you know this, sing it with me. Sometimes God answers yes when I pray. Sometimes God answers wait when I pray. Sometimes God answers no just because he loves me so. For I know God always answers when I pray. And um, yeah, your preparation is so important because, you know, children's lives are so important to God. And we hand out take homes each week and they're called Steps Forward, and then they um, have questions on them, usually a puzzle and the memory verse on the back. But um, one of these questions is, if Jesus is your Savior, write down two ways you can live pleasing to the Lord. And Zoe wrote, one, not, not disobeying our parents, two, praying, reading the Bible, and come to church happily, is go. what she wrote. <laughs> Angela who was a Nepali child that comes to our Good News Club, write down one thing that you are thankful God is in control of. One thing is my life, because he has planned it out. Yeah. So thankful for, for that. And, um, and then Sarah comes to our Tri Community Elementary. Write down one thing that you are thankful God is in control. He care for us and loves, loves us if we're bad. 
<laughs> so um, I'm thankful for the children that, that come to all of our clubs and it motivates me then to be prepared um, for the Bible lesson. So there's a couple fill-ins and we'll just go through this. Um, and I know, you know, you, you are preparing for your classes and trusting the Lord. So this is just kind of a come alongside you and encourage you in what you're doing. And maybe there's some things here that you haven't thought about that could be a, an encouragement to you. So, um, so before you begin your preparation and study time, always take the time to re-examine your relationship with the Lord. You know, ask myself, am I living what I teach in front of the children, in front of my family? Um, re-examine your relationship and understanding of those you will be teaching. When I prepare them, I'm, I'm constantly thinking of um, the Nepali children and their needs. The, the children at Tri-C who, who are unchurched, don't come from, from um, Christian homes. So they're always on my mind with how I, I am preparing and, and presenting. Pray for yourself claiming God's enablement and direction, which is the most important you know, humble ourselves before him. Petition the Lord that your preparation will enable children to grasp clearly. Lord, open up their hearts and their minds to receive your word. Um, three basic steps to prepare an effective Bible lesson. I um, actually am teaching Moses, and just this morning I read through all the Ten Commandments. And, you know, in the back of my mind, I know this. I know these commandments. But I was... I. Wow, Lord, this is something new. You know, even this morning, just reading, things were popping out at me that I read, but really applied to me this morning. So I just think that's so cool because God's word is living. It's so fresh for every, when we, when we read it. So study for personal enjoyment and then study for spe specific information in detail and study for practical application. So um, for personal enjoyment, just find a time to sit down like I did this morning. I wasn't rushed, and I just read those chapters of what my lesson is going to entail, just, just for personal en enjoyment. But then to think about the questions, like number one, what does the story mean to you? Um, what does it teach you about your relationship with God and others? Oh, those are fill-ins. So what does the story mean to you? And what does it teach you about your relationship with God and others? You know, I was thinking of Moses and how he related to God, how he was so fearful in the beginning when God gave him that assignment, and how I'm fearful sometimes when God gives me something unknown to do. Um, three, what does it tell you about living to please God? And then four, what particular verse brought comfort to your heart? Recently, I've been asked to do something that is out of my comfort zone. But with Moses, God continues to, even though Moses was making all these excuses, God wants to use him, and he kind of doesn't, you know, let him go. He, he continues to reinforce him, well, I'm going to use you even though you give me all these excuses. So that was a verse that brought comfort. So, um, so it's almost impossible to make a lesson exciting if you're not excited about it yourself. Moreover, it will only be exciting to you as it meets a need in your heart and in your life. So step two, then study. After you study for enjoyment, study for specific information. Read the story as if you've never heard it before and ask yourself questions like these. Where does the story take place? Sometimes use maps in the back of your Bible. Where am I in this whole scheme of, of Israel and where exactly does it take place? Who are the people involved? Think about King the Pharaoh, you know, and what, what a type of person he was. 
Why did these events happen? What caused this to occur? Why were the people in bondage and slavery? Number four, what is the order of events? How did it all take place? And then five, how does it all fit together? So when you're studying, you can, you can kind of, you know, ask yourself those questions. It will help you in your preparation. And then you can ask more specific questions. And um, like this is, this um, particular part is about the story of Zacchaeus. You can figure out where is Jericho? Um, what does a publican mean? Because if you have a question about a word or about, um, you know, a, t a type of person that it is, then the children are going to have those questions too. So it's good to, to know that clearly. Why did Zacchaeus want to see Jesus? And how did, how did Jesus change Zacchaeus' life? And Brooke will um, maybe talk a bit about when you are teaching a lesson, you always want to keep in mind your main truth that you're trying to, to bring across, especially to the Christian child. We well, you know Jesus changed Zacchaeus' life. And, you know, if you know Jesus as your Savior, he's changed your life. Do others see that change in you at home, in school? You know, so always keep bringing your main truth to the Christian child. And then step three, study for, study for practical application. So the, the, the Bible story facts are very important, but um, they, there will be those in your class who don't know how those facts relate to them, what makes it personal to them. So you'll need to find practical application. So you can start with the thoughts that helped you or stuck out to you as you studied the story for pleasure and choose one or two of them to explain to your class. So as, as you were reading and, and something, you know, oh, I didn't think about that before, you can share that with, with the children. Um, second point, if you were encouraged by Jesus' love and concern, perhaps for Zacchaeus, tell them about God's love for them. You know, many of you maybe are, are struggling with feeling loved by, by mom and dad or by, by brothers and sisters or parents. You know, well, there is someone who loves you very much. Um, three, if a drastic change in Zacchaeus' life impressed you, tell your class how they can show others how Jesus has changed their life. Again, are they being a godly example to others? It is these applications which make a Bible story just a mere story, and now you create a Bible lesson because you've created application for them to grab a hold of and, and to take home and you know that they can process in their mind and then um, you know they can tell others about what they learned so as you follow these three easy steps in preparing your lessons you will not only enjoy your time but you will also see the desired results as you teach so I, I what I do also um, especially as I teach the teachers and our volunteers, I practice my lesson. Um, and I, I practice it out loud. Maybe once, well I do it once, but even two times. I practice using my visuals so that I'm not fumbling, even though I still fumble many times. But I, I want it to go smoothly. I, I don't want to go longer than a certain amount of time because I'll see their eyes start to, you know, wander, and you know, uh, I, I'll know to quick bring in uh, involvement help if I see them kind of, you know, losing, losing their attention. So you want to be really prepared, you know, for this time because it's one of the most important aspects. So hopefully, this is a little bit of a help to you as you prepare. All right, thank you, Jeanette. Yeah, preparation is you know, 90% of, of, of being thorough. And, and even, even being prepared eliminates a lot of distractions. 
a lot of discipline problems. If you're prepared in singing that song, in doing that memory verse, in doing that lesson, um, it, it, it eliminates a lot of distraction, a lot of idle time that gets you know children antsy about doing something else. And so, you know, thinking about and and, and enjoying, you know, as Jeanette mentioned the first time, just read it for your own your own enjoyment, your own learning. Even though you've probably heard it a lot of times, if you're saved a long time, you know, think about what does it mean for me to read this for the first time? What did I learn from it the first time I read it? Or what is gonna, what's, what are the children gonna get from this as well? And um, thinking about that, and then start developing that lesson for application is, is important. But start with your own enjoyment. Um, what, you're, what you get from it is really going to reflect in your teaching. If it means something to you and you've learned something from it, the, the children are just going to be gravitated to that lesson because you're excited uh, about it. And, uh, so, you know, and um, so think about that. Um, you have a couple more handouts there. And um, we have... CEF, Child Adventist Fellowship, has a certain method that we use in teaching a Bible lesson. And it's consistent if we do day camp, if we do backyard clubs in the summer, if we do good news clubs. Um, we're always using this aspect in our Bible lesson. And it's, it's just one method. And you're probably, the, the curriculum you use has a method. But the most important thing I want to have you receive from this is to understand that in your teaching you're going to have two types of children in your club. You're going to have the saved and the unsaved child. And to think about applying something for both those aspects, both those children. Something for the unsaved, what they need, and something that the saved child needs. In, in that lesson that you're teaching. And, 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 you know, that's in all of our lives. We have saved and unsaved people in, in our workplace, um, in our home, in our families, in our neighborhood. And, um, you know, why do they do something like that? Well, they do that because they're un, un, unregenerated. They don't know. There's no light in their hearts. To, there's nothing connecting what they're doing is, is, is wrong or harmful to God or um, harmful to others is because they don't have the gospel. They don't have the spirit of God working from inside out. And so um, in doing that, I, I just wanted to help you to perhaps take whatever lesson you have um, and being taught and, and think about those aspects in your preparation to teach. And... Um, you know, I wish I would have known this when I was first saved because, you know, I was pretty creative and I could wing a lot, but I didn't have the perspective of what the children really needed spiritually in front of me because I was just growing as much as they were growing when I was first saved. And um, so, uh, you know, let's walk through this a little bit. And so you have a handout. Um, taking a Bible story and creating a Bible lesson. And so in, in our ministry, we try to encourage one another to talk about teaching a Bible lesson. Bible lesson is a, is a Bible story which includes the gospel, a personal application about sin, and an invitation that directs to uh, the unsaved child, that's directed to the unsaved child. It is also emphasizing the main truth with personal application and an ending or challenge dire uh, directed to the saved child. And so this first part talks about the unsaved. Three areas of application for the unsaved. The unsaved child in, in your class or club um, uh, needs to hear the gospel message so that he or she they clearly understand their need for a savior and the way of salvation. The unsaved child cannot truly understand scripture until he or she is pro uh, prompted by the Holy Spirit 
and has experienced true salvation, uh, saving faith in Christ. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the, of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. The scripture says the things that we challenge the Christian child to know can be foolish to them because God the Holy Spirit through his word isn't bringing conviction about growing in their relationship when they don't have a relationship in the first place. So number one, weaving the gospel through your Bible lesson. The, God, the, the gospel message should be woven throughout the Bible lesson and should include these truths. The first one, G, God loves you and me. And I have it up here, God loves you and me. So find a place where you can put God loves you. God loves in this relationship with Joseph. God, um, you know, J, uh, uh, Joseph ha had a special relationship with his dad. They loved one another. He may even had special attention to him. Well, God has a special attention towards you because he created you to love you. And then, oh, only son of God, Jesus is the sinless one and only. So God didn't create many sons. He didn't create, you know, um, a son, but he also created a son, not only a son, but, I mean, he, he, he had a uh, God, God, the, uh, God the son is sinless. So we don't just say that he's God's son because we think of a son that I have or you know, they, they have a relationship with a father, and I'm a sinful son. But with Jesus, he's the only son who was sinless. So somewhere in that lesson, you want to be able to help the unsaved child not just learn about Joseph, that's a good lesson, but to understand that God has a desire to have a relationship with them, and it's through his, his son, his only son, who was sinless. Then S. Sin, you and I have sinned. And we use scripture, a scripture verse to reinforce that truth. And then P, the precious blood of Jesus, uh, was given to pay our sins uh, when he died on the cross. And again, we use a scripture to reinforce that truth. And then E, ever living, that Jesus was buried, but three days later that he rose again, um, not to stay dead but he's alive again today. And then L, let him in, let Christ in. Uh, are you ready to trust or receive Jesus, uh, him as your savior? And then again, we use scripture to reinforce that, that, uh, that invitation as well. And then P, uh, number two, personal application for the unsaved, or P-A-U. The purpose of the, uh, of the personal application for the unsaved child is to explain sin. We're going to explain sin. Not just say all have sin. We're going to try to bring it down to their level to explain the specific sins they deal with. The PAU should, be, should come as early as possible in the Bible lesson so, so that the Holy Spirit can bring conviction to the child um, of sin. Next page. When you have uh, uh, decided where you will weave the gospel truth about sin, you and I have sin, then you will want to develop the, the teaching in the form of a personal application for the unsaved. P A U. P there, make it personal. You must be used. You can say you and I. You can say, you know, we, but you want to bring it back, but also that means you. Just like in our lesson today, Joseph's brothers were sinful for the way they treated him. But they're not the only ones. You and I have sinned. And then apply it. A, apply sin by using three examples. You can use one, you can use two, three, whatever, um, to help the boys and girls to um, uh, 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 a sin that they have committed then use uh, a Bible verse to teach the concept that all have sinned. And then three, there's an invitation. The invitation offers the, the uh, unsaved child an opportunity to express his or her desire to trust or receive Christ 
as their sa- as their personal savior and should give uh, should be given only after the gospel has been clearly presented. So it isn't like okay, I teach a lesson on Joseph and Joseph only, and I say, oh by the way, you need Jesus. You want to you want to ask him today to be your savior. Well, who is Jesus? You know, I haven't explained, and why do I really need him? Well, giving application helps them, even though if you're teaching Joseph, for that child that's visiting for the first and only time in your class, it's important. It's important that you share the gospel at that time for them, each and every, every time. Um, and then... Um, uh, since the invitation is a, a vital part of your Bible lesson, it is important to include the following principles. Speak with a clear voice in a gentle, unhurried manner. So the idea is, you might be rushed with that lesson realizing I have a craft to do yet today, but you want to slow down in when you give this invitation. Because this is a time for you to think about this. It's a time for you to really understand what I'm saying right now. And so I slow down and I stop and I think of, I want them to think about this invitation is important for them to walk through with them. And then give an invitation every time. It may be the only opportunity some, ch- some child can have to be saved. And that's so, that is so true. That is so true. Even in church, you're going to have children that are visiting once and done, and or they move, um, you know, and, and think about that. Fifty uh, percent of our population moves every five years, so people move all the time, and um, so make sure you give that opportunity for an invitation. Uh, keep it brief. One or two minutes should be uh, be sufficient. Use the personal pronoun you instead of uh, in. in impersonal words like uh, anyone, he, she, um, or her, or, or there. Um, never use force. Each person must decide for themselves whether or not to receive the Lord Jesus as his Savior. Do not confuse the, invita- the, the uh, instructions for, to the invitation with what you say in the challenge for the, uh, for the saved child. Use a child's language. Uh, avoid uh, superficial questions like do you want to follow Jesus or do you want to go to heaven so we want to weave those truths through our lesson and at the same time so what we want to do is give the gospel for the unsaved and we give a personal application for the unsaved we make it personal you you and I have sin transition from that lesson give three examples of sin for them to understand what is sin in their lives. And then we give scripture to support that. And at the end of all this, we review those truths with an invitation and use a script, uh, salvation verse for, for the unsaved child. And then down at the bottom there, uh, three areas for the application for the saved child. Do you have questions about this? I have a key word sheet. I'll show you a little better from that, but um, just to help you to understand some truths. And, you know, we work with teachers. We have two clubs starting in the next month, and um, uh, some of them have never used these this, this concept. And so I say to them, well, just pick one. Maybe today pick, you know, the G uh, uh, part of the acrostic and add that to your lesson. And, and then do this, you know, the G-O and the S or whatever it might be. But just build on that. Don't think you have to have it all right. Um, just, you know, to, you know, start introducing it a little at a time in your teaching. And it'll come together. But the, uh, the moment a, the child has trusted Christ as Savior, our teaching ministry has just begun. Now the child must be taught the truths of God's word so that he can grow in Christ. And we call this a main truth. The main truth is important, is, is important teaching for the Christian child. It is stated in, in, this, in, in a simple statement, um, sentence. 
the main truths should be brief and a person uh, and as personal as possible remember it is the christian child therefore it is not one of the gospel truths when you have chosen the main truth you should include it in your lesson um, at least three different places uh, rep the repetition uh, will help the saved child to focus his thoughts on what sp uh, specific truth on that specific truth the first time you state the main truth in your lesson it is only by state the statement uh, with little or no explanation Then number two, the personal application for the saved child, P-A-S. The second time you state the main truth, you, you will develop it in a form of a personal application for the saved child, the P-A-U, a P-A-S, uh, will support the main truth with scripture and, and uh, a, 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 a pre, a, appropriate exa uh, examples of how the, bi how the child can apply the truth to his life. And you see this acrostic P A S. The P is personal uh, word. A personal word. You must be used. You should. You should also identify that you are speaking to the, the saved child. Example: If Jesus is your savior. So, example: If I hold that main truth up, I'm saying in the first place, if Jesus is your savior, God wants you to be content in hard times. So I'm, I'm pointing out that this is for you, the Christian child, for you to grow in this from, grow, uh, from this lesson that we're teaching. And then uh, A, apply the teaching of the main truth to the child, child's life with uh, at, at least three examples that illust uh, illustrate or explain what the main truth means to the Christian child, uh, to the child's life. Then S, scripture verse, should be used to support the teaching of the main truth. The, use the memory verse of the Bible lesson if it is, is, if it is appropriate. Um, if not, find another verse to use in your PAS. And then we talk about the challenge here. And that's at the end. Um, the last time you state the main truth in your lesson, it will be in the form of a challenge, which comes after the climax and, it, and closes the state closing statement of the Bible lesson. The challenge should include these four things. G, go over the main truth again. Review scripture verse using uh, the PAS. Then O, overview or review the exam examples used in the PAS. And then W, will you do it? Challenge them. Um, will you do this? And and. Not only will you do this, but how about next week when you come back, show me how you did this. If you prayed, maybe it's on prayer. Find one person you can pray for this week. And then next week when you come back, I'm going to ask you, who did you pray for? And so that's a, a carryover for them to be challenged that they too, as children, can pray for one another. And at the bottom there, um, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. Um, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And um, so for the, uh, uh, for the saved child, you got the main truth. The first time, you're just going to simply state it. Then you're going to develop that statement by using the PAS. You're going to use the exam, uh, explain it with the way you... If Jesus is your Savior, God wants you to trust him in hard times. Commit that to him. Be content by giving three personal examples that they can relate to. And then you support it by the scripture that God has laid on your heart or what's in, in, the, in the teaching notes. Then challenge them to do that. Review it and then challenge them at the end of your lesson. So... In your, in, your in your class time, your Bible lesson, something for the unsaved, the gospel, and for the saved child to be challenged by. Not that each other can't learn from that, but that's the main focus that you have in every lesson that you're teaching for the saved and the unsaved. Um, you have a key worksheet there. 
And what we do in our in our clubs, let me try to find, here we go. So here's my main my main true card. What we do in our in our ministry, we provide teaching notes. And then we provide these key word sheets, and, and these go into the teacher's Bible. They put a rubber band into it. And it's a condensed version of what they study and what they learn from and, and taking. They take this part to, to club. And um, just to real quickly go through this, though, um, on the front part is an SPAU. So it's a sin application for the unsaved. And, and Jeanette is gonna just go with this. This is um, the lesson on Joseph, and, um, and she's just gonna demonstrate that real quickly. So the butler, he realized after, you know, he had he heard of Pharaoh's dream that, oh, I forgot all about Joseph. Well, he forgot him, and he said, I remember my faults and what I did. Well, sometimes you and I, we forget on purpose. And that can be sin. That's sin. Um, sin is anything you think, say, or do that displeases God. The Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Maybe mom and dad tells you to put your bike away during the day. You say, oh, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. Then late afternoon, you didn't put your bike away, oh, I'll get to it. And then it's dark, and they said, did you put your bike away? Oh, I forgot. Well, did you choose to forget? You disobeyed your parents by not obeying the first time. Maybe there's a rule where you should put your dirty clothes in the closet, but you just have them strewn all over the place. Well, you're choosing to forget the rule that mom and dad had given you, and that's sin. Remember, we can, we can sin by choosing to disobey. Uh, turn the page. And on the inside of the first column you see down there is a G. So in that, or in your lesson, I would think about a place where I can say, just like, you know, um, you know, God loved Joseph, um, God loves you. And then you see the second column is an O. That's where I put that Jesus is the sinless Son of God. It's talking, you know, it's talking about, um, you know, uh, Pharaoh and Joseph and that he was rewarded. Well, you know what? There was one that, uh, that we know that is the Lord Jesus Christ who sent us. And at the bottom of that is the first time where we mentioned the, the main truth. God can help you to be content in hard times. And then the next page is the P and E, the precious blood and that he's, that he's eternal. Give scripture an example of that Jesus uh, paid the punishment for our sins and that he didn't stay dead that he rose again and we give scripture but God commended his love towards us and that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us then at the same at the top of that uh, that third page is the main truth the PAS for the Christian child of Jesus your Savior God wants you uh, God can help you to be content in hard times and then you give that scripture knowing that the Lord uh, ye shall receive the reward for ye serve the Lord Christ. And then we would give three examples for the Christian child, go back into the lesson. Then on the back page, you'd see the invitation with scripture. We would review sin, the precious blood that Jesus gave, and will you let him in? Will you receive him today? And then I would give instruction, you know, either after I'm done here, you can go back with, with Mrs. Uh, Jeanette, and talk to talk to her about receiving the Lord or maybe when I'm finished with class today you can talk to me but you know what maybe even when you put your head down tonight you think about what you learn what you need to do about receiving Lord Jesus maybe there you can receive Lord Jesus but let us know let your mom and dad know that you received him as Savior and then go into the challenge and uh, challenge the Christian child and will you do this and give the examples and have them follow over by coming back and, and sharing whatever you challenge them to do um, for that week as well. So that's just one way that we do it, and hopefully you can think about that 
what do I what am I giving that challenges the Christian child? What am I giving that challenges the unsafe in my lesson? Um, even in my verse that I'm teaching, even in uh, the song I sing. Uh, this song is for you who have trusted Christ as Savior. This is a promise. This is a promise from God that He is can do this in your life because you've trusted you. And maybe trusted Him, but maybe there's some that haven't done that. And you long for that promise and that relationship. And so even in your songs, your verses, you can challenge them throughout, um, throughout your, your uh, class time as well. Do you have any questions with that? I know that's a lot. Like I said, I have, we have teachers that we review those things with them every year. And that's our expectations that they would not just teach a good lesson on Joseph, but they need to know about Jesus. I mean, I, I didn't get saved knowing about Joseph. I got saved knowing about Jesus and my need uh, to, to, to ad admit that I'm a sinner and that Jesus and his life and his sacrifice on that cross was sufficient for me. And, um, you know, I, I know we can be a little more complacent because we work with, in church, we work with um, Christian families, children who are growing up, um, but, but still, they need to understand you know, I, I, I went to church all my life, and I, it wasn't 18 until I really understood that I was a sinner and that what Christ, what he had done for me, until God, the Holy Spirit, convicted. And um, so, you know, do you have any questions with that? You know, you can simply write something up as far as a main truth or main emphasis for that lesson um, on a card, index, I mean, on a uh, card stock and, you know, Think about that early in your club. Emphasize that and follow up through that. Um, I wanted to give you an idea because I feel, you know, Scripture is so important to memorize. Uh, I had a, a girl on Wednesday. Uh, she's Nepali. And um, we learned a verse back in October. And uh, I said, does anybody know the verse that we first learned? And she was able to quote it. I was like, man, I am really impressed. I'm, I, and I had a prize. I'm glad I even had a prize because no, I, even some of the Christian kids, they didn't know it. And I was like, oh, I am really impressed that she remembered that verse. But it was this verse. Um, and and um, so Jeanette has a handout for you. Uh, there'll be a second handout. Um, that'll give you some ideas and purposes of, the, of teaching memory verses and also some drills that we use with it. So you can take that home with you and think about fun ways of reinforcing that verse. But the, uh, the cream color handout, it says there, you know, introduce the verse. So we have a pattern here. Um, in, in all of our verses, we introduce it. And now this is written out. We make it here at our, our headquarters and all of our teachers get it. But think of a way to introduce it that verse that you've given um, for the class. And then go down there and it says, use visual. So you wanna use something that they can read, they can see. So use it and let the children read it. So I would get them involved in this verse by giving a little bit of um, an object lesson or something that this verse meant to me or the introduction that maybe they provide. And then we would read it together and the next thing is important to read it from the Bible. Because children, they get all kinds of things thrown at them, you know, from all <coughs> kinds of people. But this is from God's Word, the Bible. So I open the scriptures, and I have it already marked, and I have one of the children come up and read it, and we follow along here so they know that this is from God's Word. God has spoken to us these words so that we can know, we can trust, and we can... We can rely on them. And then it says there, do motions together with children while you explain the verse as followed. So we provide these, but you can simply think about either using sign language or something that makes sense, but getting them moving. Because a lot of times when children come back to club the next week, they might not all know all the words, but you start doing those motions with them, and it all kind of connects. And so the pattern you have here is we, we take our hands and we say the book of 1 Peter, 
chapter 3, verse 18. And we're saying that, that this, these words are coming, Just and I'll encourage them. You go home, and you open your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. You're going to find those words. And so it comes from God's Word. So we're going to hold our hands out like a Bible. And then it says, for Christ. And we're going to go like this, or sometimes you could do sign language. But we're going to make a cross for Christ has also once suffered for sins. So we just simply give some motions to that. The just, and what that means is Jesus lived a just or perfect life. But he, in doing that, he gave his life for the unjust. And we're going to go like this, and that's you and I. The just for the unjust. And why did he do all this? Why did he die on that cross? Well, that he, that he might bring us to God. One day, and I'd say to children, it's going to be a long, long time from now so that they don't go out crying to mom and dad thinking they're going to die tomorrow. But one day, a long time from now, you're going to be able to live in a place where God is. A place without no suffering, no pain, no sin, no, for, you know, you know, no, uh, no um, uh, suffering in your life, in, 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 in the presence of God. And then we go back to the book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. So let's do that together, you and I. We'll do it with emotion. So we'll go. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. For Christ also has once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 3, verse 18. Once we did that, at the bottom it says to do a drill. And the idea is maybe Gary would pick suffered, suffered. So when we say this verse, we're going to get to that verse, and uh, that word, and only Gary gets to say that word. Okay? And you could build on that, and you could say, you know what? Gary's going to go behind the board, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick Olivia, and she's going to pick a word, and Gary's not going to know it. And when we get to it, we're not going to say the word. We're going to clap the word. And then Gary has to come around the board and guess which word we didn't use or which word we clapped on, those kinds of things. Um, tone it down. You say it in an uh, outside voice, a normal voice, a quiet whisper voice, and then we go. And they love that too because they're looking at my lips and yeah, they, they just, and they, you know, like everybody's quiet. So that's toned it down. So all those are on that handout that I gave you. Um, Jeanette has a card that, um, that now this is a long verse to do this, but each letter would represent the first word in the scripture. So we would, you know, close this so they wouldn't see it, but we would follow along by using the first letter of each word to do that. But those are all in there as well. Um, and uh, so just a way of creating involvement and interest in the verse and um, to think about when when I was saved uh, I didn't I didn't know how to pray and I remember the only thing that I remember was the Lord's Prayer so I remember the first time praying the Lord's Prayer like Lord but that was a good thing I didn't learn anything through catechisms and confirmation and church membership other than the Lord's Prayer. But I'm glad somebody, there was a Sunday school teacher, somebody taught me the Lord's Prayer to be able to give me that pattern to know that I can talk to a Heavenly Father and, um, and, and to know that um, know the importance of teaching Scripture to children it is so important in, in their lives while they're still, still receptive to those things. Um, so uh, any questions with that? Uh, you know, again, there's a bunch of drills there, and um, just you know, things that we take for granted, we think about in our classrooms, is, is just a way of being able to develop in a way that gets them involved, that they're really not even knowing that they're learning, but they are. They're having fun with it um, and doing that. So, and maybe you know, reduce the number of verses you do, but just continue to go back the verses that they have learned over um, your class time um, for this school year uh, to kind of continue to review them and encourage them to say it when they come back. Um, reward them for it 
kids get rewarded for all kinds of other stuff, you know, reward them for memorizing and, and, and placing God's word in their hearts. So, anything else? Questions? We're going to run out of time here. Um, anything you have questions about or thoughts towards uh, class? Again, you know, if, if we are blessed to be able to come back, we would love to do that develop you know either our, our lesson preparation memory verses you know even that we do in like a 40 minute session so that was just kind of a uh, an overview of what we use in a special session um, even songs we use and and uh, helping you know the teacher to kind of develop in that this is kind of a rolodex i don't know what we want to call it but we just you know when a child does something with us we take it and put it in the back, and then I know next week this is the next child that's going to be involved in, in doing something in, in club. Uh, some of them take attendance. Some, you know, some can just you know help you with the verse to do the motions. Uh, one of the things that if you you know you pick one child, they come up do the motions. They get to pick another child. Now you have two children. You have four children, six children do the motions with you, and and, and it gets them involved. Gets them being willing to stand up front and do something that they can accomplish um, in their limitation, accomplish, and, and they, they can be an example to others in, uh, in, in you know, keeping them involved throughout the, the class time. So, anything Jeanette you know of? We, I, I know you talked about class management and, and, and we do some of those things, but I really emphasize with our teachers is if you keep to a set agenda and keep things moving, it really eliminates just idleness and downtime and, and just distractions. And, and mix it up sometimes. You know, mix up your, your like craft. Do it in the beginning, do it at the end. Um, keep them anticipating a variety of, uh, uh, and it keeps it fresh in, your li in their, their lives as well. Um, and and uh, you know, again, they're gonna enjoy different aspects of of your class time together so okay all right i hope this was helpful uh, i'm sure your heads are spinning <laughs> uh, what's that yeah 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 well you know word of life has been faithful in their support and and we've come i remember 23 years ago writing you know, writing things out for clubs, you know, or cutting things out, having yeah. volunteers color all the all the get, uh, games that we play, things like that. And so we've been well blessed by the support of, of churches and individuals to be able to provide everything we have for our teachers in any club throughout Dolphin County is provided free of charge. And so we provide handouts and any kind of visuals and lessons, all that. Um, the training for them to be able to to uh, to do their ministry to children. Um, that's where our heart's at. Good. All right. Anything else? All right. Well, there's still lots of snacks, so <laughs> I'll give you a few minutes. Let me pray, and uh, thank you, Pastor uh, Zach, for our time, and, and uh, your willingness to be out here on a Saturday. Now you can still head back down to the farm show for a few minutes. <laughs> You guys are spoiled. It's just over the hill. <laughs> Let me pray. Father, we thank you that, oh, in our time together in the beginning, that we were challenged about eternity. And, Lord, may we never be ashamed of the opportunities that we have had when we, face, when we uh, come before you face to face. That you have given us lives that so need the Lord Jesus Christ. And so need to be able to, to live a victorious life, a life that enables them to live above the, the challenges that perhaps most of us in this room will never face in this world that's so bent towards um, the absence of who Christ and what God, who you are in, 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 in our life, in our nation, and in this world. We thank you for the privilege of, of this world coming to our borders that we can work and, and, and communicate the truth of, of Christ um, and, and your word to, to various cultures in these days. 
And um, I, I pray that you would be with each of those in this room, and others that um, give so much and want to do so much for the lives of children. And what a what a, a noble task. What is something that you, as we shared, that you will reward, you will bless those that reach out to those that can't help themselves. And we were all helpless like that. Uh, spiritually bankrupt. Our pockets were empty when it came to you. But your, your grace was full. And your mercy was full to us. And so I pray that you would certainly do wonderful things in the lives of these individuals here or their families their, their siblings or their, uh, their parents and, and uh, uh, husbands and wives and their communities and those that they teach that um, you would just stretch them and as Jeanette shared preparation takes a lot of work but it's a good it's a good work to be involved with and so thank you for our time thank you for the felt the fellowship we could have and thank you for Word of Life Chapel and, and just their desire to to, to reach um, children and be effective and to be able to, to glorify you in the midst of it. In Jesus' name.